What did Paul say? Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.21, test all things. Test all things. And that's not written there just to take up the white spaces. It's incumbent upon us to exercise discernment. It's not an option. And say, well, discernment, that's just not my gift. I'll leave that for somebody else. That's a cop-out. But once you take that charismatic position, it is a very slippery slope right into Word of Faith. Few people put on the brakes. The vast majority do. to the fundamental doctrines of historical Christianity, the pre-existence of Jesus Christ, the virgin birth, the sinless life, the atonement on the cross, bodily resurrection of our Lord, salvation by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. On these issues, we do draw a deep line in the sand, and we must uh, warn people about wolves in sheep's clothing. It is not an option. It is a duty. then I would submit to you that these prosperity preachers are the most wretched, callous, heartless, selfish, narcissistic, uncaring, wretched people alive on the face of the earth. Remember that woman supposedly cured of polio? Pastor Benny knows it made for a great episode of his TV show. He knows it probably helped squeeze even bigger donations from his flock. But there's something he doesn't know. That woman works for us. Woman doesn't have polio, never did. Then why did she send you? We put her up there to see if he could tell her story was not true, to see if it would matter, to see if he would ever check. So, Benny, is it faith or is it fraud? I'm still a human being like you. Made many mistakes, big ones, and will still make mistakes. But I really want to do that. I really want to. The God, little g of the prosperity gospel is a very weak, very effeminate God. It's not the God of the Bible. But the allure of health and wealth is one of the things that makes this movement so appealing and yet so profoundly dangerous at the same time. Because the prosperity gospel essentially says this, come to Jesus because he'll make you wealthy and he'll heal your body. They appeal to two of the most basic and universal of all human desires. Most people want to be wealthy, and very few people enjoy being sick. And there's a few who just like the attention, but most people don't like to be sick. And they'll say, well, if you'll just come to Jesus, then you can have it. Hmm. Sign me up. That's a pretty good deal. You're telling me if I come to Jesus, if I ask Jesus into my heart, he'll make me wealthy? He'll heal my body. I don't have to be sick anymore. I can have my best life now. Yeah. Yeah. I'll try, Jesus. But is that the real gospel? Or is the real gospel something a little bit more like this? Come to Jesus because you're a sinner. And because of your sin, the wrath of God abides on you. And the only way to have that wrath removed is to repent of sins, turn from sins, and place your trust in the risen Lord Jesus Christ.